Hello, my name is Jonathan Huang. I'm a writer for the Yale Scientific, and I'm interviewing Professor Gary Brudvig on chemical photosynthesis and um, his contributions towards that field. What is the field of um, light-driven water oxidation like? like? How does it relate to, I guess, our energy problem? Yeah, so what, one of our goals is to try to develop a way of harvesting solar energy. And one of the problems with solar energy is that it's intermittent, so that's, and you need to have constant energy supply. And a good way to store solar energy is in the form of chemical bonds to make a fuel. And of course, natural photosynthesis has been doing this for billions of years, and, the, and that's where the fossil fuels that we are using now come from. But a key aspect of that on a global scale, you, fuel production requires a chemical reduction reaction and you need to have electrons from a source to do a chemical reduction and water is the only molecule on the planet with enough abundance to serve that purpose. And nature learned this billions of years ago and they developed the process of water oxidation and oxygenic photosynthesis and, uh, and that's where the oxygen in the atmosphere has come from. Recently, about seven years ago, we began a collaborative project with several other faculty, Professor Crabtree, uh, Batista, and Schmittmeyer in the chemistry department and we're working together to try to take the information we've learned about how biological systems do this process and develop artificial processes that can also do the same things. We refer to that as bio-inspired artificial photosynthesis. And the, the long-term goal would be able to develop a process that can, that can be used to convert solar energy into chemical fuels and hopefully, at some point, be able to replace the fossil, use of fossil fuels for our energy technology. We're really focused on trying to learn the, the basic architecture, how do you make a system where we can couple these reactions efficiently together and use solar energy to make the process happen. The systems that are in hand are all very inefficient, so they don't do these reactions very well. So we're trying to, sort of in a reductionist mode, trying to study single steps of the reaction, understanding what are the yields, the rates of reaction, and you know, how efficient are they, and then what, why are they not working as well as they could, and hopefully we can improve their properties then. One area of research that we're, we're beginning to, to work on now is to use a larger number of light absorbers. This is a system we refer to as like an antenna, where you can have a lot of light absorbers that could then use a, an array of absorbers to, to couple to catalysts to make the process go more rapidly and also perhaps more efficiently. You can put this into a, um, into a solar cell and you can measure the efficiency of it. Uh, so by that you could shine a certain quantified amount of light onto the cell and measure you know, how much product do you produce. In a photoelectrochemical cell you can measure the current that's generated. Okay. Um, it's electrical current that's generated. Um, that will tell us some information about how well the process is working, what kind of you know, it, higher current is better, you know, and mm -hmm. so we can quantify it that way. And the best people have done for photo electrochemical cells are only on the order of about 10% efficient conversion, whereas so, some solar cells now are over 40% efficient in, in, in solar energy conversion to electricity. But right now we don't have good efficiencies for doing the chemistry, that is, you know, to make, you know, make fuels from solar energy. And that's, and that's really an area that we're working um, to try to improve. So perhaps I could, um, at this point, maybe bring in a little bit of what we're, we're going, where, where we're going in the future on, on, on the Yale campus. So we were just, okay. just this past year, have created an energy sciences institute on Yale's west campus. We're hoping to really expand the activity in the energy sciences area with this new institute. Renewable energy is one of the areas of focus for the energy sciences institute. Hopefully, you know, make significant progress in the research in that area as well. Um, the best catalysts right now are are using a very rare element iridium. And right. we've been working with these iridium catalysts. Uh, Professor Crabtree is one of the world's experts in iridium chemistry. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so through his contribution, we've been able to develop some, some very nice new catalysts. But they're all they're, they're based on iridium, which is very expensive. We'd like to take some of the insights that we've learned about how to make very efficient catalysts using iridium and apply those to make all correspondingly good catalysts using more abundant uh, materials. And it's interesting that nature uses manganese as the catalyst for this reaction. Um, we don't have good catalysts yet for artificial processes based on manganese, and so that's the direction we're hoping to be able to make some contributions on the catalysts.